Hello guys and welcome back to Thunder Tronics. In this episode, I'm gonna be reviewing this SCART switch. It is a SCART switch I bought from AliExpress. It has 10 uh, inputs and one output uh, in the form of traditional SCART, the European SCART, and another SCART which is the JP21. These two are the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, these two are the outputs and we have 10 inputs. Now, originally I wanted something around eight inputs, nine inputs or something like that. So this one is more than enough for my needs and it doesn't really take much space. Now, in terms of design, I think that it is really, really nice because the switches are actually uh, separated well and uh, it can fit any tight space and uh, aesthetically, it's really not that bad. As you can see right here, it is powered by a USB a cable and uh, it does come with a cable and it does come with a SCART male to male uh, in order to connect it to your display uh, if you want to and it also has these outputs which are the RGB and the C-Sync as well as the audio left and right and the phono jack in case you really want to extract the signals to another source besides the SCART one so it really is uh, a very good one in terms of specs and the form factor has a plexiglass very nice it has the rubber feet which is a really nice feature uh, especially the aliexpress type of goods which sometimes doesn't have this much detail and uh, the labels are really clear if you really want to dig into the part numbers and so on and understand how it works now let's uh, have a closer look on uh, the design this design as you can see uses physical relays not uh, a uh, not some uh, analog ICs or something like that. Uh, of course, the ICs are the uh, the best in terms of uh, new technology and so on. But this old technology of physical relays are really uh, proven, and you cannot uh, do mistakes using them. So, since this is from AliExpress, I think this is the best way that they can do it because it's not really that reputable source. I'm not familiar who actually designed this one because it's available from too many sources out there on Aliexpress, on eBay. People say they have cloned some Otaku store uh, uh, device, but I'm not familiar with this. But uh, and uh, you know, I'm not really interested to know the 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 story behind it since it's really available and it's really really cheap. Uh, it features an automatic switching. There is, to my understanding, no manual switching. And I haven't really tested out uh, to see if it has any manual switching uh, around. And uh, for me, I don't see any uh, push buttons or switches to actually uh, pick the source that you want. But since it is an automatic switch, you can really just activate uh, the input that you want and it will automatically latch it to the output. And in case you have simultaneous uh, outputs, or inputs, I'm sorry, as I will demonstrate later in the video, this thing can actually uh, switch the newest one. So if you hook Super Nintendo on input one or or the Genesis on input two, uh, if you uh, powered on the Genesis, it will be displayed. If you powered on the Super Nintendo next, the Super Nintendo will be the output. And when you turn it off, it returns back to the Sega Genesis. So even if you turn off one of the signals, it automatically goes to the next one. I see some uh, microcontroller, uh, the, the microcontroller circuitry around here. Uh, it's gonna be very basic. Maybe it, it looks for a signal or the C-Sync uh, signal or any signal on pin 20 of the SCARs and activate that source. Anyway, uh, enough of this uh, talk. Uh, let's head into the sections of the video. I, des I designed this video to be uh, technical and practical. I will demonstrate uh, the usage of oscilloscope to measure the signals to see that this thing actually doesn't have any uh, dimming effects or or any or, or any of that uh, that uh, side effects usually uh, associated with such analog products. It does uh, really work well with any USB supply. I have tested very very bad quality USB power supply and it works uh, surprisingly well. Uh, both in OSSC and on my CRT, uh, Sony CRT be, uh, behind me. So uh, to sum up the video, get this one. It is really, really nice and it fits all your needs. 
and there is nothing to worry about using it. But if you are interested in details, let's head to the video. So before we get into the, the reviews, let's speak about my messy setup right here. As you can see right there, this is the USB power supply. Very, very bad quality, $1 only. Uh, it has two outputs. One uh, goes to the SCART switch, as you can see right here. And it has this power LED. The other goes to the RetroTink uh, RGB to component. And from that, with high quality cables, all the chain from here to there, from here to the consoles, uh, the monster cables uh, out there to the CRT, and it goes to the CRT. So it is RGB from my consoles right here. As you can see, I'm gonna be doing a full video about my setup and I will demonstrate everything and how I, could, I hooked it uh, up and so on. That will be to another video. So this is the Super Nintendo and the Dreamcast. I'm gonna uh, use both of them uh, connected to here, to these two inputs. And this is the CRT. So right now I'm gonna power on the Super Nintendo. As you can see, it powered on with the, the uh, Super Everdrive X5. Now I'm going to uh, press uh, on on the Dreamcast. And as you can see, the Dreamcast is on. Okay, so right here, this is the Dreamcast. Now I'm gonna power off the Dreamcast and look how it switches on automatically. And just like that, the Super Nintendo is on. So as you can see, the switching is very seamless. You can actually hear the relay is ticking, which is a good sign. And uh, I have the SCART output from the Japanese, the European SCART, which is the traditional. This one right here is the Japanese SCART. And uh, there is no point in testing multiple systems. As I have demonstrated, it works with uh, both systems at the same time being on. So anyway, Besides uh, this practical demonstration of uh, seamlessly switching between signals, let's now head to the technical stuff. Let's first demonstrate the C-Sync signals. This picture shows the C-Sync signal uh, connected directly from the Super Nintendo to the oscilloscope. And as you can see, it is as clean as you can expect. Next is the C-Sync connected from the Super Nintendo to the switch itself and from the switch to the oscilloscope. And as you can see, it is really the same as the previous one with just a little bit of noise, which is really uh, not that much of, a, uh, of an effect. Now, this one is using the very bad power supply. Now, the next picture, which is this one, uses a very good uh, USB power supply from Panasonic, and as you can see, it really enhances it just a little bit. Next, I used the full color background test. I used the red test, so the screen is all red. Now, as you can see, this is the original picture with uh, no switching, and this is with the SCART switch. As you can see, they are uh, really identical, and there is no real difference between them. Now all these previous measurements are done uh, with the, the situation called no load. So I have con disconnected the SCART cable and measured the pins. Now I have hooked the entire system and displayed the, the, the picture on the CRT and simultaneously using the phono jacks, the one that break out the signals, I use those jacks to measure the blue and the C-Sync signal under load using the color bars uh, testing software. Uh, this is a very well-known software for testing Super Nintendo and other devices. Now, as you can see, the, the C-Sync signal is really attenuated very well, and there is no problem uh, or uh, safety uh, dangers if you hooked it up to your system as shown right here. But as you can see, there is a lot of noise and jagginess and maybe undershoot and overshoot. This is due to not this, uh, the switch itself, but rather the uh, RCA cable that I connected it. Uh, the RCA cable is very long and it acts as an antenna, which is not really optimal for measuring uh, noise stuff. But here uh, I'm not interested in measuring noise as much as I'm interested in measuring the amplitude of the signal. 
to make sure that this signal is actually uh, attenuated very well uh, and up to the standard. 280 millivolts peak to peak is about as good as it can be. So please disregard the noise because this is not really a proper uh, measuring setup for noise. It is, it is not really uh, something that demonstrates how good or how bad the noise performance of this device. And uh, let me tell you that there is absolutely no physical artifact or no display artifact uh, seen by the human eye both from close distance and from, bad, uh, from uh, far distance as I'm going to demonstrate later on. And to continue, this is the blue signal, uh, blue uh, signal from the uh, switch itself showing the amplitude and showing that it is really clean signal as much as you can expect with the amplitude uh, that is within the specs. So ultimately, there is absolutely no issue with this device. Well, this is uh, not the best setup to test it, but this is my PC monitor, as you can see. And this is the switch signal. And trust me when I say this, there is absolutely no noise or whatsoever or any artifact. This is directly from the Super Nintendo via the SCART switch and the not so good power supply. Let me get some buttons right here to demonstrate uh, the background noise. Here it is. Even if you focus too much, you can barely see something, which is the case of all systems. I mean, if you really play on close distance, you can never see this unless you stick your eye like one centimeter to the screen. And this is the, the it's not really perfect for testing, but I really see absolutely no noise on flat areas as well. And what you see is just my screen uh, with the shutter of the camera, which cannot be done. And I think this concludes this review. And uh, the final sum of this review that I really recommend using this uh, SCART switch and it's uh, very cheap compared to the others. It is automatic, it has all the features except if you are a truly advanced and professional you want sync stripping and uh, you want multiple outputs buffered, amplified, filtered, what so on then you should uh, you should search another uh, solution but if you really want some basic and slightly advanced features like automatic switching and so on then uh, this is the real deal so the final verdict is that i totally recommend using this uh, scart switch and it is the best choice uh, for beginners and professionals alike now uh, i will see you in the next video hopefully my uh, my messy setup of my retro gaming corner and until that day, see you next time.